with Leslie Chong this morning from Imugene. Leslie, morning. Hi. Good update, Leslie, from you this morning. Phase one uh, vaccineus study update. Positive early signals uh, you're seeing, Leslie. Tell us a bit more. Well, I am delighted to release that news uh, because it we are showing at even at the mid-level dose that truly our virus is infecting the tumor cells. So for instance, um, bile duct cancers or cholangio cancers do not get much affected by therapy therapies out there. It's called a cold tumor because everything has been turned on. Your immune system never sees it. The fact that we have two bile duct cancer patients, one in IT and one in IV, and the one IT, the intratumoral monotherapy by itself without anything else, it has but cured this patient. They're going on, on, on the study for 350 days with 200 uh, days of complete response, a complete remission with monotherapy alone. So we are indeed infecting and allowing the patient's own Im immune system to come in there and mop it up. So it's just, um, it's just beautiful. And then the intravenous, we're starting to see hints of that working. So even in that bile duct cancer, again, that does not does not uh, um, get uh, turned on by the immune system at all. Two bile duct cancers got turned on, early signs and even an intravenous that it, it may be working. We have a few patients that are seeing some immune ap activity where the cold tumors are turning hot. So we're seeing spots and signals. Um, we just need a dose escalate a bit higher, I think for the IV, but really exciting. Um, the team, uh, this is a data cut in time, so it's only going to mature. But even now, we're seeing some wonderful signals, um, positive, wonderful signals. And you've now reached the next cohort in the IV arms of the, the monotherapy and the combination, have you? That's right. So IV is really important because it goes after the metastatic state. So when the when the disease, these are heavily, heavily pre-treated patient population. They've either gone on really a rancid mix of chemo, then they fell off that. Some of them have gone on to a myriad of monoclonal antibodies to checkpoint inhibitors. So drugs after drugs and nothing is affecting them. So some of our patients have had six lines of therapy and haven't seen any effect. And they're now getting this kinder, gentler, oncolytic virus, and it is indeed infecting, it is indeed doing something, which is um, just phenomenal. We're only, you know, we keep going up the dose because the doses are safe and we're seeing signs. So we wanna have a large uh, window of opportunity to dose these patients. You have been enrolling fairly fast into these studies. That's absolutely right. and investigators or doctors vote on their feet. When they see a patient who has been on myriad of various different therapies, they want to give them the best option. And our doctors, our oncologists have been, have been literally throwing their patients um, at our study. So it's, uh, it's exciting to see that the patients, some of the patients are seeing some relief from their tumor burden. And it's exciting to see how the oncologists are on board uh, with Imugene and our new sort of uh, treatment paradigm, which is our, which is our very prolific oncolytic virus. Hmm. So what's the next news, Leslie, to come out of these studies? What should we be looking for? So we have, as you know, we have Azer cell, we have Oncarlytics uh, already in the clinic as of last week. Um, and we have now the mass study quite active. And so 2024 is really going to be concentrating on getting Azer cell, that phase 1B, the mass study that really supports our Oncarlytics program. Um, so all of that 2024 is going to be quite littered with data and news. And if you see our slide that we just recently uploaded onto our website, the last page is, is, is where we really want to prioritize for that near-term data and to benefit the patients the most. Yeah, good to see you, Leslie. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew.